Welcome back to my TV program. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Thief of Time by Tony Hillerman. This is book number eight in his Lieutenant Lephorn and Officer Chi Navajo Tribal Police Procedural Mystery Series. Gosh, I don't, that's a long title. I don't, that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. The Lephorn and Chi Navajo, Navajo Tribal Police Mystery Series. And um, th I think it's HBO or Netflix that is filming all of these books. From book one, I think they started with book one, but it's a brand new series, and I hear it's absolutely fantastic. Anyway, I love this series. I have all of them right here on my shelf. That is the entire series right there. <clears throat> and if you've followed my channel, if you know you for any length of time, you've probably seen me review books one through seven which I have done. Now we're to eight, A Thief of Time. This book came out in 1988. Let's talk about the cover, because these are got, every single one of these books just has a cool cover. This is a cover painted by an artist named Peter Thorpe. He did all of the early Tony Hillerman covers, and they're just great. I mean, I love the pot, the painted pot, and the skulls around it. The painted pot has the little flute player, or otherwise known as the Cocapelli. And it plays an important part in the um, story, these pots. Um, what happens is, let's get into it. Let's get into this one. This is one of the, well, they're all just, every one of these books is just a little mystery gem. I love them. This one more so than the others, just because uh, it's just, this one I really captured me. I really enjoyed reading it. Again, I've read them all once. I'm reading them again for the channel. Starts out with Dr. Ellie Friedman Burnell. She is a person that goes around and um, is what you would call a pot hunter. Someone who, just in the Southwest, is sort of, like, they're not really archaeologists. They're, they're just people that go out and hunt for Indian artifacts out in the desert. Which is extremely illegal. <laughs> extremely illegal. Anyway, five years previous to this novel, she had found an ancient um, secret kind of hidden away up in some cliffs, a little um, Indian dwelling five years ago. She wants to go back to it because she wants to excavate. She wants to see what's in it um, because this is what she does. Um, and she remembers how to get to it because she was following some, the petroglyphs of, of a flute, the, one of the, of the Cocapelli. And she would follow them and it would lead her to this place. And so late at night, she takes her flashlight and goes off into the, um, desert southwest. Another thing that this has got is this book has a great, great map of the Four Corners area of uh, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona, and all of these places. I've been to most of these places, so I really understand what the landscape is like down there in the desert, in the, the sort of the Navajo reservation area. And um, so she takes her flashlight out in the middle of the night because she wants to secretively go hunt for these pots. Now, this is extremely illegal. People that do this are... Um, are gonna get, if they're caught, they get um, arrested and they get a lot of, they get a huge amount of prison time. I mean, it ain't no joke. And they're called pot hunters generally, but the um, Native Americans call them thieves of time. Or in other words, Ellie Friedman Burnell is a thief of time. She's out there stealing what doesn't belong to her. Um, and it's very disrespectful. You know, these things, when these archaeological sites are found, they're usually carefully and meticulously 
sifted through, and those things, as Indiana Jones says, go into a museum, or you just leave them as they are. In fact, there's some statistics in this book that there are hundreds of thousands of known Indian dwellings that are just left as they are in the de desert southwest. Probably more than that, some that haven't even been found. But they are pretty much well documented. Everyone that knows anything knows where exactly they are, and they are checked upon once in a while to see if people have um, looted them or vandalized them or any of that stuff. And if they find out who does it, it's like I said, you go to prison for this kind of thing. So this is an interesting book about that subject, about these thieves of time, about these pot hunters. Um, and so anyway, she gets up to find the, um, this is the setup to the murder, okay? She gets up to this area where she knows there's this hidden dwelling. She starts to sift through it. She notices that there's a bunch of frogs in there that are alive, and they've got strings tied to their legs. And the strings are tied to stakes in the ground, and she's like, well, this is bizarre. Someone's been up here recently doing this weird, because who, I mean, this makes no sense. And then she's killed. She doesn't see who kills her. I mean, she's just killed. And so herein lies the mystery. Now enter our two Navajo tribal policemen, uh, Lieutenant Lephorn and Officer Chi, and they have to discover or have to find out who, um, well, she's missing. She goes missing. She goes missing for months and they have, or they're out searching for her. Now, Lephorn, Lieutenant Lephorn is, or is one of our main characters. And he, in this book, is suffering, you know, a bit of depression because of uh, his, the love of his life has recently passed away, and he's really struggling with that as he's sort of investigating this missing woman. Um, Officer Chi, as they're investigating the missing woman, he stumbles across some more bodies and more dead people out there. And so... Now the mystery is like kind of expanding as like more people are dying. You know, the Ellie is missing. The Dr. Ellie or Ellie Friedman Burnell is missing. More people are dying. The, 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 and then that's all the plot I'm going to give. Um, I will uh, read the back real quick just so you can get a sense of it. A noted anthropologist vanishes at a moonlit uh, Indian ruin where thieves of time ravage sacred ground for profit. When two corpses appear amid stolen goods and bones at an ancient burial site, Navajo tribal policeman Lieutenant Joe Lephorn and Officer Jim Chi must plunge into the past to unearth the astonishing truth behind a mystifying series of horrific murders. Yeah, one of the twists of this is um, Ellie Friedman Burnell, she's not just a, a pot hunter, which she knows is wrong. She's actually an anthropologist. In fact, she's which is like doubly makes her doubly kind of guilty of, she's a doctor in anthropology, this is her job to sift through these, but she also steals the stuff. Um, anyway, many of Tony Hillerman's books deal with the ancient mysticism of the Native Americans and the supernatural elements that are out there in the desert southwest. Um, and all of that great stuff that just makes for a super, super creepy mystery series. And A Thief of Time fits into the series just great. I mean, it's the sequel to Skinwalkers. Skinwalkers was the big blockbuster Tony Hillerman book that made this series way famous back in the 1980s. This was the sequel, and, it, and, and he followed up the Skinwalkers with just an absolutely grand sequel here. Great, great book. Another, this is a 10 out of 10 mystery novel. Every word is just golden. I mean, there's no wasted words. There's no wasted dialogue. Tony Hillerman books are short, um, but detailed. There's, there's a way he writes where just in sparse language and sparse sentences, he can convey so much mood and emotion and describe the desert landscapes with, in such magical terms. It's just amazing. It's one of why he's one of my favorite mystery writers, if not one of my favorite writers of all time. Again, A Thief of Time, 10 out of 10. 
one of the best mystery novels you're ever gonna read. Trust me.